What's up, you guys? It's Big Sin. Thank you for tuning in. It's been so long. It's been a couple months since I've talked to you guys. So a lot of you guys have seen my day in the life as a wig maker vlogs in the past, and y'all have had some questions about how you can get started. So I figure I'll just make a video telling you guys how I got started, my journey, and just giving you some tips on how you can get started too. And right before I was about to tell my boo not to call me because I was vlogging, she calls. Text you, you call me. What you doing? Are you serious? Thank you. I thought you were coming tomorrow. Okay, let me do this vlog so by the time you get home, it'll be done. Okay. First of all, I want to say hey to Nikisha. Nikisha, you sent me an email asking me how did we start on making wigs and I emailed you back, but for some reason the email wouldn't send. So, Nakisha, girl, if you're watching, thank you for reaching out. This video is for you. If you didn't get my email, I'm about to address it in this vlog right now. Okay, so let me start with how I got started. So, this was a couple of years back, maybe six months or so after I just started just making wigs, period. Like I made me a little website, I made an Instagram, and I was just, you know, pretty much just getting into the groove of it, just practicing. And y'all, I, I was not that good. I remember practicing, like, the first time me getting my thread, my needles, my sewing machine, everything. I remember the first time, maybe the first or second time that I practiced on a machine, um, I used white thread. You know, when you sew a wig, you're supposed to use black thread. But I used white thread just so I could see my work, just so I could visually see my lines and how straight my lines were. Y'all, that wig was so bad. Them lines were so crooked, but I was so happy because I had tried a million times before and it was just, a catastrophe but this particular time I think I still have footage of it but this particular time that I started practicing on this wig this one wig it was just I could see myself making some progress the lines were still crooked okay but they weren't as crooked so that just made me feel so good and so proud of myself y'all for the most part not for the most part I am self-taught the first time I started making wigs I was doing them by hand. The very, okay. So when I first started making wigs, I was making them by hand. I was sewing them on those styrofoam canvas heads. Not this one right here. Not this black canvas head. Those white styrofoam canvas heads. I was doing them on those when I first started. And this is when Bundles was like really just starting to get popping, like when Snob Life was a mecca of bundles, like back in that area. That's when I started making wigs. Um, I, y'all, I didn't even have a like model mannequin head, like, hold on, one of these. I didn't have one of these yet. I didn't even know where to go to get one of these. And y'all know what I did? I went to my local beauty supply. I asked if I could buy one of their mannequins just like right off the floor. And I think the lady sold me a mannequin for, what, $20, $30? She let me have it for like 20 or 30 bucks. And y'all, I thought I was on to something. I was on to something because at that point, I was making wigs by hand. I was 
I had my Instagram, my first Instagram page of me making my wigs. I had that, so I was posting. I was getting a little bit of traction, but I'm like, I cannot model my wigs on this white styrofoam head. So I have one mannequin that the owner of my local beauty supply store let me buy. And it was just up. It was just upward growth from there. So that's when I started making wigs by hand, like way, 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 way back. I can't even tell y'all what year it was. Okay, maybe like 2016, 17, 15, 16, 17, something like that. That's when I had started making wigs. So fast forward maybe like a year, Tokyo Styles, he hosted a wig making class. And back then, y'all, this was before sewing machines. Tokyo Styles was making wigs by hand too. So I invested in his class. So after that, fast forward a couple years later to like maybe 20, 2019 ish, something like that. I noticed the girls was making wigs on sewing machines. Not as much as the girls are making them on sewing machine now, though. This was when it was like first getting introduced. So I'm like, hmm. If I could master making wigs on a sewing machine, I could really increase my productivity. I can get more clients. I can work faster. My wigs will look neater. Now, mind you, my hand sewn wigs, when I first started those, those were trash too. But I got really good at that eventually. But then I'm like, okay, it's time to elevate even more. So I said, I wanted to start making wigs on a sewing machine. It wasn't a class for that back then. If you knew how to make a wig on a sewing machine, you were self-taught. And Big Sin taught herself how to make a wig on a sewing machine. There wasn't even any education on this on YouTube. It was just you just trying your luck by yourself and seeing where you went. Like it was a couple ladies who was making them wigs by Neek. I don't know if anybody on here Remember Wigs by Nick, but she dominated IG and Facebook when it came to wig making. She was really my biggest inspiration when it came to wig making because I think she was the first girl that I saw making them on a sewing machine. Like I follow her from when she was hand making wigs at first and then she switched over to machine made wigs and I was just in awe, I was just inspired. And she was a Capricorn like me, so you know, we just had so, you know, I just had a connection with her just off of that. Just my own little connection with her just off of that. I bought a couple products from her. I watched her. I studied her. I bought a couple of her ebooks and tutorials. And I really just, I bought my first sewing machine. Then I just, I just started practicing. Like, I would go to the beauty supply store and buy the cheapest bundles there just for the sake of practice, even closures too. I would buy the cheapest closures, the cheapest bundles, just for a second practice. And that's one tip that y'all can use. When you first starting out, don't waste good hair while you're practicing. Just buy some cheap left to hair from the beauty supply. So from there, I started getting a little bit better, but I still wasn't great. I evolved so much. Like my lines was just weird on my cap. And I just came a long way, y'all. So I'm like, I'm not gonna get better if I don't get practicing. So I just kept practicing and practicing and practicing. And I got to a point where I was all right. But the thing with that is you can't wait until you just good as hell to start. You gotta just start where you are. You're not gonna get better if you don't start now. So that's what I did. And in the beginning, I was just making wigs for people that would hit me up. They would hit my website up and they would get a wig made. They would get a custom wig made. And I'm like, okay, this is going pretty cool. Like I got my first, I remember my first sale. I met up with this girl in my neighborhood. She found me, I don't know how people used to find me on Instagram, man. She hit me up, she wanted a wig. We met up to the exchange. I even took a picture of when I made my first sale. I'm gonna see if I can find that photo too. This is how I got started with the ducks wig making. And mind you, this was before I even knew what the term ghost wig making was, before that was even a thing. So I'm on Twitter one day scrolling. And 
at the time I followed this person who owns a very popular hair company and they sell hair and they sell wigs apparently. So they just made a comment on Twitter like, dang, I need a wig maker. So me being me, I was just like, I make wigs. Now, let me say this. I still was not the best at making wigs. I was just all right. I still needed some work, but I really went beside myself. I really went against my own fears and was like, just jump out there and do it. You're not gonna get no better if you don't just put yourself out there, if you don't take a risk. What's the worst that could happen? They could say yes, or they could say no. You gotta take a risk for yourself. So I did it scared, y'all. I put myself out there and I said, I can, shoot, I can make wigs, I make wigs. And do y'all know the person sent me a message on the Twitter, like, let's talk. And y'all, I'm like, oh my God, is this really happening? So from there, we exchanged numbers, we talked about it, you know, we came up with a system or whatever. And I was hired off of Twitter. So I really couldn't believe it. Now, mind you, my workload, it wasn't huge. I was getting clients here and there, but you know, it wasn't like, I wasn't super bustling, but I was doing all right. I wanted to do more, but I knew I had to get better. And now I'm like, okay, well, I'm not about to press myself to get more clients because I'm really not that great. Am I right? I could be better. But with me putting myself out there with this hair company, it just really showed me that I was ready to take a chance on myself. I was ready to bet on myself. And that's exactly what I did. And I cannot believe the outcome to this day. I still work with this company. To this day, I just can't believe how far I've come. So me and the hair company, we just set everything up. And from there, like, I was getting, y'all, so they were sending me orders in batches. So sometimes it would be five wigs. Sometimes it would be 10 wigs. Sometimes it would be 15. Sometimes it would be 20. Sometimes it would be two. It was just, it was crazy to me because I had never gotten this amount of work before. So I was just on my knees thanking God that that little message on Twitter got me to where I was at that point. And just working with this company has really made me perfect my craft to a T. And I'm grateful for them because they helped me get perfect. My job, I wasn't that great. Like there were times, it wasn't always an easy road. Like there were times I, I would do a couple of weeks and they would sometimes send it back to me like, um, the sizing wasn't right or just, you know, something was off and I had to fix that. And I appreciate their honesty with me. I appreciate them working with me through all of that. Even though I wasn't great in the beginning, they stuck with me. And that just makes me so worth it, y'all, because they could have been like, ugh, she ain't that good, we gotta find somebody else. But I think because at the time, there weren't a lot of people making wigs on a sewing machine. And then when they found me, they was like, okay, we can work with her. So I think they just stuck with me. I don't know, maybe they saw potential in me. Because I don't know, I think anybody else would have been like, huh, we about to find somebody else because they're not good. And maybe they wanted to find somebody else at some point, I don't know. All I know is they stuck with me and they helped me get perfect. And over time, those corrections, those correction orders started coming in less and less and less and less and less. And now I can literally say, I feel like I am just, I've mastered making wigs on a sewing machine at this point, just because of my work with them. And then through that, I would get other clients too. So like my base is ghost wig making, private level wig making. So if you don't know what a ghost wig maker is, Ghost Wig Maker makes wigs for a hair or wig company just on the back end. We make the wigs with the company's hair 
the company's labels. It's all private labels. You would know that it came from me. Like, I'm just in the background pushing out the work in bulk for this company. I don't style the hair, color it, nothing. I just like the foundation and then the company, they customize the wigs accordingly. They customize the wigs how they want to, so. This business, it has grown. It's gotten more popular over the past few years, so. I'm here to tell you guys how you can get started too. <laughs> give y'all some pointers on how to get started. Like I've been doing this for, I don't know, five, six years or something like that. Making wigs on a sewing machine for a couple of years now. Wig making in general, maybe like eight, seven, eight years. So I'm gonna give you guys some pointers on how you can get started in this day and age. Like I said back then, I don't know, I think that was just the intervention of God honestly, because I did not have to do a lot to get this one client. I saw them make a post on Twitter, I commented, they commented back, it was just so easy. So I just, that was all I got, y'all. Here are some tips on how to get started, how to set yourself up to be a private label wig maker. Number one, have a business page displaying your work. So, if you already make wigs for the public, you should be putting out content that shows your process. You should be posting content that shows your foundation. Now, when I say foundation, you need to be showing how perfect your guidelines are on your wigs. You need to be showing how flat you sew the tracks on your wigs. You need to be showing how you stitch. Do you straight stitch? Do you zigzag stitch? Either way, you need to be showing how clean that is. Because people, my motto is quality over quantity, period. I don't care what's going on. If that quality bad, I don't care how many you got. I'd rather have one good wig that's gonna last me five years than buying three, four, five wigs and over, three, four, and five wigs over five years. And they all go bad after a year or six weeks, six months. Quality over quantity. Make sure you perfect your craft behind the scenes. That's what's gonna get y'all the customers because why are you selling bad wigs? Your wigs is lumpy, your wigs, don't fit. Why are you sending lumpy wigs? You can't do that. When you're displaying your work on your page, your pictures need to be clean, clear. The lighting needs to be good. You just, you have to be clean cut, okay? Don't use filters. We're not using filters no more on our work. Focus on showcasing the construction of your wig over the styling. Styling, so, but styling is important if you're making wigs for the public, but you have to find a balance on the way you post. So half of your posts should be, you know, showcasing how well you can flat iron or whatever you do. The other half, I should still be able to see, okay, she can style her wigs real good, but her construction is A1 too. Because if your construction is not good, you might as well hang it up. So, pricing. In this day and age, I say you should start off by charging $75 minimum to about $100 maximum. And you need to have a minimum order quantity. So $75 a week up to $100 a week with a minimum quantity of five to 10. Five is kind of on a low end. You know, if you first getting started with this ghost wig making business and you're not really confident in your work or you know you could be a little bit better at what you do. If you just starting off and you just want to, you know, put your foot in the water, see the game a little bit. I would say on a low end, start off 
charge us $75 per wig and the customer must order at least five wigs because at the end of the day, you want to make this worth your while. You kind of want to guarantee a certain amount of income when you're doing this. When you're doing anything, really, you want to guarantee a base amount of income for yourself because it's really just you looking out for yourself. You got to eat. You still got to run your business. You know, you still got to live your day-to-day -day life. So I would say start at 75 on low end. On the high end, if you experience, I'll say at least $100. Five to 10 weeks. MLQ, minimum or quantity, period. Okay. Equipment. I still have a trusty sewing machine, my singer 4423 heavy duty sewing machine. That is the very first sewing machine that I ever bought years ago. I still have it. Best investment I've ever made. Start with that sewing machine, y'all. Y'all can get that on Amazon. I have the link to that in the description box. Y'all really don't need a lot. So get that sewing machine. You also, when you starting out practicing, whether, okay. Okay, so equipment. So equipment, you do not need a whole lot to get started as a cosmic there. Whether you are already making wigs for clients already, or you just want to come off the gate being a ghost wig maker, not making, you know, custom made orders, made to order wigs. Start off with the Singer 4423 Heavy Duty Sewing Machine. That is the best investment I have ever made when it's come to making wigs. That's the first sewing machine I ever bought. Right here. This is the first sewing machine I've ever bought, and this only sewing machine I've ever had. It's been working wonderfully since I've gotten it. So grab that, grab you some polyester thread. I recommend the brand Coats and Clark. Get you some pre-wound bobbins. Get you some pre-wound bobbins from Synthread. I live by these. You won't have to thread another bobby in your life if you get these. And if you haven't seen my tutorial on how to set up a sewing machine, scroll through my videos and find that. You'll find all of those products. You'll even learn how to operate a sewing machine. So if you're just getting started, like I said, you're just getting started or you already been in the game and you know what to do. But that is the equipment to start with. Make sure you get your needles, your thread. You want a seat needle, curve needle. That's what I use. And you need canvas heads in all sizes, you guys. One size wig does not fit all, okay? That's the issue too with a lot of wig makers. Y'all think everybody is a size 21 or 22 canvas head. They are not. I think you get a canvas head as small as 19 inches mm -hmm. for the gross with the small heads. Get your canvas heads in all sizes from 19, I think I got 20 inch. I started at 20 inch. I go from 20 inch to 24. Let me actually show y'all. So these are my canvas heads, as you can see. Ooh, let me turn this light down. This is a 20 inch. This is a 22 and a half inch. This is the big boy right here. The 24 inch, you see that? Mm -hmm. This is a 22. I think this one is my first canvas that I ever bought. When I first got started. Yeah, this is a 22. 
This a 21. I even know the size is just by looking at them at this point. This is my 23 right here. And I have another 22 inch right here. That baby in the corner is a 22 inch. So like I said, I have two 22 inch canvas heads and all the other sizes in between. So you wanna make sure you have a variety of canvas heads to accommodate everybody's head because everybody do not have the same head. Everybody don't have the same size head. Okay. Now, how do you find clients? So you could be like me and just get lucky and have a conversation with somebody on social media and set everything up that way. But this day and age, I think because wig making is much more prevalent. A lot of people are doing it now. You have to really get in these people DMs, email people, email your favorite hair company. If you see they sell wigs, they have a need for wigs, businesses can miss DMs. So I would opt for email first. So email your favorite hair companies asking if they need a wig maker, your favorite celebrity, their hairstylist, email them. Find out who your favorite celebrity's hairstylist is and send them an email soliciting your services. It really just comes out on the grinding. Like, get on Instagram, search for salons on hashtags, search hair companies through hashtags, and really just go through and see if they have wigs. They might need a wig maker. Look for wig shops look for wig stores in your neighborhood see if they need a wig maker when your email specifically you want to outline your terms and conditions your prices so how do you find clients you can reach out to hair companies who have storefronts and sell wigs and ask them if they need a ghost wig maker your favorite celebrity your favorite singer rapper actress musician find out who do that hair Find out, find out who does their hair and reach out to them. Put yourself out there and say, hey, I'm a ghost wig maker. Don't mention the celebrity themselves, but just mention yourself to them and say, hey, I make wigs. Next thing you know, that person may hit you up like, hey, I do need a lot of wigs made. My client wears a lot of wigs. So if you can make a bunch of me on the back end, you won't look up and now a celebrity will be wearing your wigs. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So it's really a hustle. A lot of people do just have pre-made wigs on hand, but I don't really like pre-made wigs. Maybe like the size not really be off. Like even like with my hair vendor, when I would order, cause at one point in time, I thought about selling pre-made wigs and I'm like okay before I just have them for sale let me try one let me order one first and wear it and see how I like it I ordered one the sizing was just weird to me so but my head size is a 22 inch I ordered a 22 inch from my vendor and it was too big for one it was too big for two I didn't like the cap that they used they used the um the lace cap I don't like that cap with thin lace I like a mesh dome cap the one that we Okay, I love those. But for the most part, a lot of companies have pre-made wigs and y'all can probably relate. If you ordered a pre-made wig from one of these hair companies, it was probably a little too big. Like the fitting was just kind of off because it's factory made. And for some reason, the sizing is just, it's not that accurate. Most people really prefer to have a custom made wig because you can really get it tailored to your size. But like I said, make sure your storefront on social media is clean, concise. It's showing your work really well because some people may just reach out to you. They may come across your page and reach out to you. So you gotta stay ready, okay? You gotta stay ready for the opportunity. So going back to when I got started with my first wig company, in the beginning, you know, it was really trial and error. Like I had never done this before. I don't know if they did this before, but for me, I was just, I was really going with the flow. I didn't know what to do because like I said back then, there weren't many people doing this. How we did it was they provided the hair and the wig caps. But over time, like as we started making the wigs, some of them, you know, they were coming back like, hey, the sizing is weird. How can we fix this? I just got to research like, okay, what are the best mesh wig caps on the 
market. What are the best mesh dome caps I can use? Because I would get it from a beauty supply store and that was all right. I've used a lot of brands and I can honestly say the best brand is Q-Fit. With going through that, I'm like, okay, I need to find some top tier wig caps because I've been trying everything and they really just suck. So I came across this vendor. And if y'all want that wig cap vendor, I'll have the link to that in my description box. Y'all can grab that. And I have been using those wig caps ever since. Like ever since I started using those, I have not gotten any complaints about a wig size being too big or fitting weird. They're perfect. They come in small, medium, and large, so you can adjust them according to your canvas head. Like, a lot of these wig hats in a beauty supply store, they come in different sizes, but they still be kind of weird if you ask me. And you can also have, make sure you have a section on your website where people can come and fill out a request form and they can put the order in immediately there. Or you can have it where they have to contact you first, like send you an email and inquire first, and then you can work out those details between you two. So it really depends on how private you wanna be about the ghost wig making. Like you can have all your prices displayed for everyone to see, or you can kind of keep it as an inquiry based only. That can be a topic for another video because it's a lot that goes into that. So if you have not watched my video on how to set up a sewing machine, check that out. It's going to be a game changer for you, I promise. I think that's all I have for y'all. If you guys have any more questions, hit me up in the comments. Send me an email. I hope this video answered your question, Nikisha, and everybody else. Thank y'all for watching. Catch y'all in the next video. I'm about to go get something to eat.